It was the day of preparation before the Sabbath, and this was Passover Sabbath. Therefore, so that no bodies should remain on the crosses during the Sabbath, the Jews asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies removed. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. One who saw it is our witness, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth that you also may believe. These things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled. Not one of his bones shall be broken. And another scripture says, they shall look on him whom they pierced. By this time, evening had come. A respected member of the council, Joseph of Arimathea, was one who was looking for the kingdom of God, a good and righteous man who had not consented to their purpose and deed. He was a disciple of Jesus secretly, for he feared the Jews. Now he took courage and went to Pilate to ask for the body of Jesus. Pilate was astonished that he could be dead already. He called for the centurion and asked him whether Jesus was already dead. When he was assured by the centurion that it was so, Pilate granted Joseph the corpse and commanded that it be given over to him. Joseph bought fine linen and came and took the body of Jesus. Nicodemus also, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. It was he who had first come to Jesus by night. They then took the body of Jesus and wrapped it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb where no one had ever been buried. Joseph laid the body in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock, and rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and departed. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph were sitting there opposite the sepulcher and saw where he was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath day, they rested according to the commandment. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb and they were saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb?
Why are you here? We seek Jesus who was crucified. Why do you seek him? We seek answers. We come with shattered hopes, disappointments and sorrows. We come with fears and failures. We come with our sins seeking forgiveness. Why do you seek him? Because we are afraid, uncertain, and we have doubts about him. We feel guilty and lost because like his disciples, we too have deserted him and we wonder if we are in the right place. Hear the gospel of the Lord. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And be behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. You have come to the right place. Jesus has broken through tomb, death, hell, and grave. They could not hold him. He has taken your guilt upon himself, nailed it to the cross, and buried it in his grave. Do not dwell on your doubts fears and uncertainties, your sins are gone just as surely as Jesus is gone from the tomb. Do not seek the living among the dead. You will not find him there. He is here among us and with us now and always. For Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.
Today's Old Testament reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 65. Behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem to be a joy and her people to be a gladness. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people no more shall be heard in it the sound of weeping and the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not fill out his days, or the young man shall die a hundred years old, and the sinner a hundred years old shall be accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity, for they shall be the offspring of the blessed of the Lord and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall graze together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox and dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading is from Paul's great resurrection chapter, 1 Corinthians 15. If in this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep, for as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom of God to the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must be put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran out and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple and they were going toward the tomb, both of them running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he, he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there and the face cloth which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And then she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, Tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he has, had said these things to her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Gates and doors were barred, and all the windows fastened down. They spent the night in sleeplessness, and rose at every sound Half in hopeless sorrow And half in fear the day Would find the soldiers breaking through To drag us all away Just before the sunrise, I heard something at the wall. The gate began to rattle, and a voice began to call. I hurried to the window and looked down into the street, expecting swords and torches and the sound of soldiers' feet. There was no one there but Mary, and so I went down to let her in. John stood there beside me as she told us where she'd been. She said they moved him in the night, and none of us knows where. The stone's been rolled away, and now his body isn't there. We both ran toward the garden, then John ran on ahead. We found the stone and the empty tomb, just the way that Mary said. But the winding sheet they wrapped him in was just an empty shell. And how or where they had taken him was more than I could tell. 
something strange had happened there but just what i didn't know john believed a miracle but i just turned to go circumstance and speculation couldn't lift me very high cause i'd seen them crucify him and then i saw him die back inside the house again the guilt and anguish came everything i'd promised him just added to my shame when at last it came to choices i denied i knew his name and even if he was alive it wouldn't be the same. But suddenly the air was filled with strange and sweet perfume. Light that came from everywhere drove shadows from the room. Jesus stood before me with his arms held open wide and I fell down on my knees and just clung to him and cried. He raised me to my feet and as I looked into his eyes love was shining out from him like sunlight from the skies guilt and my confusion disappeared in sweet release every fear i'd ever had just melted into Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Grace, peace, and Easter joy are yours from our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. There are many different kinds of people in the Bible, and I think we identify with them differently at different times of our lives. Maybe we identify with young David who was forced to face down Goliath when we're facing some difficulty that seems insurmountable. It seems like, at times like that, it can be very comforting to think that David's victory is our victory, that just as God protected him, so we can know that he will protect us. Or maybe we identify with Peter who denied knowing Jesus on that Monday, Thursday, because his faith faltered. I don't know about you, but I've wept bitter tears, if not literally, certainly figuratively, when I've realized how I've failed my family, my 
friends, even you, the people of God, that God has placed under my, under your, under my care. When that happens, how wonderful to know that as Jesus came to Peter with assurance of his forgiveness and love, he comes to you and me, assuring us that even though we failed him, he will forgive us. And knowing that gives us the courage to ask for forgiveness of those that we've hurt or failed and by the power of the Holy Spirit to strive for strength to live and to love more deeply. This morning I'd like us to identify with someone else, someone who came to the tomb that first Easter morning, Mary Magdalene. She was called Mary Magdalene because she was from Magdala, a village on the western shore of the Sea of Galilee. All we know of her is what we read in Luke chapter eight. Jesus went on through cities and villages, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God, and the 12 were with him. And also some women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. And that short list of women includes Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out. Having someone relieve your life of seven demons intent on stealing you away from God clearly had a profound effect on this woman. So when Jesus was crucified, Mary Magdalene was there along with some other women watching at a, dis at a distance. When Joseph of Arimathea placed the body of Jesus in his own tomb, sealing it with a great stone, Mary Magdalene and another Mary were sitting nearby watching. That was early Friday evening, Good Friday for us, before the sunset. In Luke 24, we read, it was the day of preparation and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed and saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned home and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath, they rested according to the commandment. Since Saturday was the Sabbath, Mary would have rested, that is, she wouldn't have cooked or worked, even if she felt like it because she was so heartbroken. And she wouldn't have been able to go to the tomb because it was outside of the prescribed Sabbath day's journey from where she was living. But something tells me that she walked more than a few steps inside the house that day I can see her pacing the floor as she grieved over the death of her dear friend. The burial spices and ointments were ready, but all she could do was wait anxiously for the hours to pass so she could pay her final respects and acts to the Lord. So the Sabbath began at sundown on Friday and she had to wait through that whole night and next day before she could even consider going to anoint Jesus' body. But of course the Sabbath didn't end until the sun went down on Saturday and by then it was too late to be out. You know, I think we take our modern conveniences like electric lights so for granted. But at that time, women knew not to travel anywhere at night. And it was especially dangerous now that the tensions were so high in Jerusalem so Mary had to endure another restless night. But then, even before the sun fully rose on that first day of the week, she read, we read that she made her way to the tomb. Now if you compare the gospel accounts of the resurrection, the series of events can, can seem a little confusing. But this appears to be what happened. The women started from the place where Jesus was buried, started for the place where Jesus was buried. And, and then one of the big questions on their minds was who was gonna move the stone? But as they neared that tomb, they saw that the stone had already been rolled away. That was the first sign of the resurrection. Now we know that because, well, we live this side of Easter, but Mary didn't have the vantage point that we do. She could only imagine the worst. So she must have left the other women and ran back into Jerusalem to tell Peter and John. And you can almost feel the despondency in her words as she says, 
They have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. Stunned, Peter and John ran to the tomb. John got there first, looked inside, saw the strips of linen which had been wrapped around the body of Jesus, but no body. Another sign of the resurrection. Peter wasn't as fleet of foot, apparently, as John arrives first, but Peter doesn't just look in, he goes into the tomb itself. And he sees not only the linen, but also that burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head, and oddly, that cloth had been folded very neatly and set off to the side apart from the others. Nobody breaking into a tomb to steal a body would have been that meticulous. Another sign of the resurrection. But Peter and John, still confused, headed back to their home. Meanwhile, Mary had made her way back to the tomb and weeping inconsolably, she had to be there. It was the last place that her Lord had been. And still weeping, she looked into the tomb and saw two angels, two men, two figures dressed in white, another resurrection sign. But their presence and words made no sense. And so in her sorrow, she turned away and through her tears, she saw another figure. It was Jesus himself, a a rather certain sign of the resurrection. Mary sees him, but doesn't see him. Her grief, her tears, maybe the dim light of mourning may have contributed to her confusion, but on the other hand, who would imagine that this man who had been brutally beaten, crucified, and then run through with a spear could be standing right in front of you, healthy, unbloodied, and fully alive. So Jesus speaks to her, a voice she certainly should have recognized, another sign of the resurrection. But Mary assumes he must be the gardener, the caretaker of the cemetery. But then Jesus speaks her name, Mary. She had heard that voice say her name so many times, and that single word convinced her that the impossible was possible. Jesus was really there. There had been all kinds of signs of the resurrection that morning, but it wasn't until Mary heard Jesus speak her name that she realized he was alive, that he had risen from the dead. I wonder if Mary was there the day Jesus spoke of the good shepherd saying, The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before him, before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Jesus called Mary by name, and when he did, she knew it was him. His voice was for her the sure and certain sign of his resurrection. But that wasn't all he did. He gave her an assignment. Go to my brothers and tell them. And she did. She'd missed all the other signs of the resurrection, but after Jesus called her name, she believed and eagerly did as he said, telling them, I have seen the Lord. Jesus would give a similar assignment to the the rest of his disciples. In the book of Acts, Peter is speaking to Cornelius, a Roman centurion, and said, Jesus commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins in his name. The disciples took that assignment to heart telling those around them that Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. And so did the next generation of disciples and the next and the next. And now we too, we too believe. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. That morning in the cemetery, when Jesus called Mary by name, he indeed led her out. He led her out of her deep grief and despair. 
And later when Jesus appeared to the disciples, he led them out, led them out of their fear. He led them out of their locked room and into the world where they boldly proclaim the good news that brings life and forgiveness to all who believe. Like Mary, Jesus has called you by name. It happened in your baptism. In your baptism, Jesus led you out, led me out. He led us out of, the, out of sin slavery. He led us out of death's dread. He led us out of the devil's dungeon. Christ's resurrection is the certain sign that his death on the cross paid the full price for our sins. Christ's resurrection is the certain sign that death is defeated and the devil is done. And in your baptism, you are connected to that resurrection. Paul says, we were buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Because baptism has connected us to Christ's resurrection, we have new life. His resurrection certainly gave new life to Mary. Her tears of sorrow became tears of joy. Then Mary went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord and that he has said these things and he, that he had said these things to her. Can you imagine that? The disciples were confused, disappointed, despondent. One of them had betrayed Jesus. Another had denied Jesus. They had all forsaken him. But Mary came and told them, that he had said these things. What these things? These things certainly would have included Jesus' words, go to my brothers and tell them. He didn't say, go to those scoundrels, those cowards. He said, go to my brothers. That was an important detail they needed to hear and what a difference it made in their lives. They came to know that they were forgiven. They came to know that he still loved them, that they were his brothers in spite of what they had done. Jesus' resurrection certainly gave new life to the disciples. So also for you and me. The resurrection is a sign that Jesus looks upon us not as not as the unfaithful people that we often are, but rather as his beloved brothers and sisters. After Christ's resurrection, Mary became a sign of the resurrection. The excitement in her voice when she shared the good news with the disciples was certainly a sign. And the disciples also became signs of the resurrection. The boldness with which they proclaimed the gospel was a sign a sign of Jesus' resurrection. And you and I are also called to be a sign pointing to the resurrection hope. Help people see that the resurrection changes the way you look at life. You know, life is, life is tough right now. Things have changed so much. We're separated from one another. The future seems uncertain. There are so many who are afraid and who wonder if life will ever be the same. And in many ways, it won't. We'll never undo or forget these days. The anxiety, the frustration, and even anger we may feel at times, it'll fade, but we'll never forget. But even now, we can be signs of Jesus' resurrection as we share our hope and our confidence with those around us. Because of the resurrection of Christ, our future is secure. Because of the resurrection of Christ, we know that our God will never leave us or forsake us. We are Jesus' sisters and brothers. He says so himself. Because of the resurrection, we know that ultimately, everything is going to be okay. Tell others that. Let them know. Let them see. Let them hear your confidence. Be resurrection people, for that is what you are. 
We are resurrection people because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Well, I welcome you to this Easter Sunday service. What a joy it is to gather together, at least virtually, as the people of God. You know, Easter can never be canceled. Easter goes on each and every year. Each, Easter goes on each and every day for the Christian. We rise new each and every day. I know that we aren't able to celebrate the Lord's Supper together here today, but I, wanna, I want you to know that um, if you desire the Lord's Supper, I'll be available for you. Just call the office, make an appointment. Um, we'll set something up. I'll block out certain times. Hope we'll know what those times are, and we'll gather together. I'll bring you the Lord's Supper. I'll bring you that great gift that assures you of your forgiveness of sins. And God willing, these days will be passed soon. We certainly continue to pray for that. Until that day, continue to, continue to check on your friends and neighbors. Continue to pray for, pray for them and to encourage one another, encourage each other to know, that, to know with confidence that uh, these days too shall pass and that everything is gonna be okay. We continue as we confess our faith together in the words of the second article uh, of the Apostles' Creed, Luther's explanation to that. I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from all eternity and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with, with his holy precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death, that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. This is most certainly true. Let us pray. Lord of life and conqueror of death, at your chosen time you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to carry our sin to the tree of the cross, and then on the third day you raised him from the dead. You've given us the sure and certain promise that this life is not all there is, for we were made to live forever. For this we give you thanks and praise, saying, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it. Blessed Lord, give us your Holy Spirit. Give, it, give us your Holy Spirit with power so that we may be bold witnesses to Christ's resurrection. May all who hear the message of Christ's empty tomb turn from sin, trust in him, receive the forgiveness of sins in his name, and join in saying this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Heavenly Father, rescue those who are captive to prejudice, drugs, or violence. Renew and restore all who are victims of crime and lead those who serve time in prison to a new and right way of life. Protect all who police our neighborhoods and cities, all who serve in the healthcare industry, all first responders, especially during this time of the uh, coronavirus and the pandemic. And we also ask that you would give new opportunities to those who seek work and those who long for relief from these bad times. Bless our schools that each day may, each child may one day return to school and that as they learn, they become law and abiding productive citizens. For your great mercy and your, pr your protection each and every day, we once again say, this is the day the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it. Lord of life, in your rising from the grave, you showed how you are able to bring hope and life where there is despair and death. Heal and strengthen any who are ill and recovering, including those we've listed before you in our bulletin and those that we hold near in our hearts. Comfort those who weep for loved ones now fallen asleep, remembering that in our Lord's resurrection, 
we too have new life and help us each day to say this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Eternal Father, creator of all, we give you thanks for showing us love and grace through your Son. Eternal Son, incarnate for us, we give you honor and glory and praise for, our, for earning our salvation. Eternal Spirit, revealer of love and mercy, we praise you for showing us Jesus and bringing us to faith. For redeeming the world from sin and death, we give you thanks, O Lord. For rising from the grave and giving us victory, we praise you, O Lord. For ascending on high and sending us the Comforter, we praise your name. Send that comforter into our lives each day that we might give an answer to the hope that is ours because you are risen from the dead. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessing and honor and glory be yours forever. Amen. Risen Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his steadfast love endures forever. Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought, you, brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.